I told you to get used to it. We're just doing striker content now. That's all we're doing. Uh, right, welcome back to the channel, Stephen Alson. We're talking today about Gong Halo Ramos. So, United and Ten Hag have been pretty vocal about the need for striker replacements uh, and the pressure on signing one. Um, it's going to keep mounting. It really is. The striker on a lot of people's lips in the ascendancy is Gong Halo Ramos. He's one of many to keep an eye on. And although he'd all but ruled out, um, or he'd be ruled out in terms of a transfer come January, uh, I want to keep an eye on both the, the takeover and why this guy makes sense to be our actual striker signing for next season. Even though I think the chances of bringing him in in January are probably slim. He is one of the most well-round strikers in Europe and still improving. He started this season on fire with 15 goals in just 22 games. He had a World Cup hat-trick. Hey, Ramos has got a World Cup hat-trick, mate. Hey, Chris, you fucking stay sat down there, aren't mate? Not needed. Hat-trick in the knockouts. Effectively replaced Cristiano Ronaldo in the starting eleven for Portugal. No mean feat to do. He has got the stature and the build to hold defenders off. He is physical enough to lead the line on his own, which is something that I think Ten Hag is desperate to have in whoever he anoints as our new number nine. He has become extremely deadly in the penalty area and... I was fortunate enough to be in the stadium for his World Cup hat-trick and... The timing of his shots, particularly the first one, is uh, is special. I think the the sort of player that hits that with the technique that he hit that with is very confident and very competent. I think it's someone that's got a lot going on about themselves. He played bloody well. Um, and I don't like signing players on the back of a World Cup, but this is the guy that we identified all the way back in the summer. And he hadn't even done anything close to what he'd been doing in the league so far the last six months. Uh, he's one that I'm, I'm all about. His movement in the box is predatory. He is, he's becoming very deadly. He's a, a good header of the ball. Uh, he scores quite a lot of goals in the air, something I think United could add to our game. He goes well off both sides, which makes him extremely difficult to defend against. And he hits a lot of shots early and first time, which is another thing about how good his movement is and also how hard it is to defend. When players take in an extra two and occasionally three touches in a box, you often see them get closed down. When they take a touch, it's out of feet and Bosch, they've hit it. Sometimes the defender doesn't even realise they've got hold of the ball before they've done that. Another massive positive for him is his defensive contribution. This is why I think that Ten Hag might prefer to wait for someone like a Ramos come summer rather than invest a decent chunk of change in January and it not quite be perfect. I think that's why they're opting for the loan first and bringing in exactly what we want a little bit later. Uh, he is effective at winning the ball back for the team. He is clever. He is disciplined in, in how he presses. Uh, and like I said, the physique of him is is one that's worth looking at just alone. He has got potential because that quickness, that alertness, all combine to a really effective sort of area of his game that is needed but often overlooked when it comes to forwards. And he's got some main assets of a quality striker, um, decisiveness, bravery with the ball at his feet, confidence in his own ability, good decision-making. The things that can come a little bit later on in his career, already kind of got that. Um, if he comes in young and for a good price, he fits the profile of an Eric Ten Hag centre-forward. He has got elite potential. It's the probably, right now, even on the back of a good World Cup, probably the cheapest he's going to be going for for the remainder of his career. He comes in as a striker that's in the ascendancy with a prospect about him without necessarily having the weight on his shoulders like a mega, mega money signing would have. According to Portuguese outfit record, who claim Ramos tops 10 hard shortlist, they've said United are set to battle both Paris Saint-Germain 
and Newcastle for Benfica forward Gonzalo Ramos in the January transfer window. Whether United can afford to make the move for a player so critical to Benfica's success this season remains to be seen. Financially, United don't seem to be in a position to compete with the rivals for permanent signings and look to be exploring loan options instead. So the man who scored a hat-trick for Portugal against Switzerland in the last 16 of the World Cup earlier this month has got a €120 million Euro release clause, £103 million, pound, in his current contract, so he may not be one for next month, but it says that Ten Hag is a fan and looking into him for the future. And I think that's probably entirely accurate. United don't necessarily have the financial pull of Paris, and we definitely don't have the financial pull of Newcastle right now, pre-takeover. I wonder, can a deal be done for the summer? Now, that amount of commitment might be too much to do while there's uncertainty of the takeover. I think the takeover will happen by then. And I think United will have new owners by then. Um, and I think that the new owners are likely to be ones that are going to look to invest immediately. It could be that we miss out on some really good players, Goncalo Ramos and the like being amongst them, as we see a settling in period. But I'm almost quite blasé about it, where I'm like, look, yeah, would I like him? Yes. But I think that they're going to bring in some mad players, and I think that they're going to, they're probably going to make some mistakes with it. But I think they're going to come in and they're going to push for big players that are going to do bits. I think that's what our new owners are going to come in. I think they're going to come in with a different attitude to the Glazers. It would be insane if someone's watched all of the Glazer protest and then decides to try and buy Manchester United and run it the way the Glazers did and think that they're not going to get abused. So I have to think logically, whoever has watched Manchester United and everything that's gone on with Manchester United, I would presume that they have looked at every every aspect of what's going on and they're not going to run it the same way the fucking Gimps did. Um, or have been. Anyways, that's Gonzalo Ramos. Big potential striker. He is going to move to a like a, a team competing for the Champions League, already linked with Paris. Could he be tempted to go to Paris? I'm sure he could. Could he be tempted to go to um, Newcastle? I'm sure he could. You've got to hope someone like a Bruno Fernandes is getting in amongst it and uh, has got a little bit of sway in that Portuguese dressing room to be able to help get him over the line for Manchester United should Ten Hag actually want to act on that. Because I think he could be a huge, huge player for us. But uh, that's my thoughts on it. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on it and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.